Hi again, everybody. Mr. Kolakowski here. This lesson is about curved mirrors. Our previous lesson was about flat mirrors and the law of reflection. This is going to be another extension of the law of reflection, but obviously we're going to change things up a little bit. And uh, let's take a look. This is a this is a picture that we've all experienced in one way or another. Here we have uh, a spoon, uh, the same kid, and uh, you can see the photographer here. Um, this first spoon is uh, inverting the, the little girl over here. The girl is right side up. Yeah, obviously the ma image is manipulated manipulated a little bit, but uh, the main idea is why does this happen? Why does this happen? That's really the goal for today's lesson. Let's see if we can understand the physics of curved mirrors. There are two types of mirrors, the convex and the concave. One way that I remember this is, um, let me start with this one on the right. If you're looking at a mirror that's curved like this, if you exaggerated this and you really exaggerated it, it would look like a cave that you could walk into. Um, the, the mirror bulges away from you, okay? That's kind of what a concave mirror looks like. Convex mirrors, on the other hand, are bulging from the middle towards you. Um, you could imagine if this was, uh, this is you, and uh, here's Captain America with his shield. Uh, he's holding his shield out to block something you're about to throw at him. And um, that's, uh, that's sort of the shield uh, shape in the convex mirror uh, bulging towards you there. Uh, again, this is you, the observer, looking at the mirror. Here's a few examples of convex mirrors. Uh, security mirrors, this is the bean in Chicago. This is the person taking the, uh, the photograph, and you'll notice that they're pretty small, right side up, but pretty small. How come? Let's see if we can understand what's going on. Uh, we have to look at what they call ray diagrams. This first picture is a conceptual picture from the textbook, and I want to uh, define a few things for you here. Um, this is not an actual ray diagram in a, in a literal sense, but it does give you the concept of what light does in... Um, the, the scenario with convex mirrors. So the first thing is we have this x-axis and we call that the principal axis. You'll notice that the, the mirror itself, this is, uh, it's curved, it's not flat like uh, we saw in our previous lesson, and um, therefore we have a focal length. The focal length is dependent on how curved the mirror is. This picture doesn't show it, but there's also something called the center of curvature, which is twice the focal length. Uh, the focal length is actually uh, describable by the focal point, which is the actual place on the principal axis uh, where those rays, uh, in this case, appear to diverge from that point. Uh, the reason they call these things diverging mirrors, if we follow one of these light rays very carefully, the light ray comes in here parallel to the principal axis, it hits the mirror, it has to follow the law of reflection, right? So using that focal point as a reference position, you'll notice that light ray um, diverges away from the principal axis. Um, we'll see that in more detail here with an actual light ray diagram. Let's start with our first ray diagram. <clears throat> okay, convex mirrors. Okay, first of all, we have an object. And in physics, they use these arrows because they're really easy to draw. And it's very convenient. This is the top of the object. This is the bottom of the object, okay? Here we have the principal axis. We have the focal point and the center of curvature. Uh, let's, for convenience sake, let's say the focal length is 10 centimeters. That means the center of curvature would be 20 centimeters away from the mirror. The center of curvature can be thought of as if this mirror was like a sphere, right? This, this is a segment of the sphere. The center of curvature would be the very middle of that sphere. So the principal axis, focal point, center curvature, and then we have some light rays. Now, we're only going to draw three of the many, 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 many millions and millions of light rays that are emanating from this object. And we're only going to use the top of the object as a reference position. Okay, all of this is an attempt to simplify this so that we don't go nuts and have to draw a million light rays. Okay, so this object is sitting in uh, a room like I am, like you are and the light hits you. Some of the light is reflected, some of the light is absorbed. We're gonna look at three light rays that bounce off the top of this object. Let's start with the first light ray. They call this the principal axis ray. So we're gonna start at the top of the object, so light comes in from the room, 
hits this object and it goes off parallel to the principal axis. It hits the mirror and it diverges using the focal point over here as a reference position. Uh, that's the first light ray. The second light ray, different light ray. We start at the top of the object. The light ray, the photon of light emanates from the top of the object. We aim towards the focal point. It hits the mirror and reflects back parallel to the principal axis. That's the second light ray. They call that the focal point ray. And then last but not least, we have a light ray called the centering ray, different light ray. We go from the top of the object. We aim that light ray towards the center of curvature. We hit the mirror. We bounce right back and go in the direction from whence we came. This too is the law of reflection. And what's interesting is you'll notice these three light rays that have reflected off the mirror are not going to meet up. If we take the light rays that have reflected and we imagine that we, the observers, are over here, those light rays enter our eyes and our brains interpret it this way. The reflected light rays are extrapolated. You'll notice these dashed lines are the reflected light rays. They're extrapolated back to the world behind the mirror and it meets up here at this one point, and that's the tippy top of the image. It would be, in this case, smaller than the object, but it is right side up. And that's what always happens with convex mirrors. No matter where the object is, whether it's close or medium distance or far away, you always get virtual images that are right side up and smaller than the actual object. The best example of a convex mirror is the one on the side mirror in our cars. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Um, does that make sense? I hope it does, because this picture here explains why this semi-tractor trailer truck here is smaller than it actually is. Now, our brains are going to interpret things that are smaller as being further away. And that's why it says objects in the mirror are closer than they appear. The reason we do this to these side mirrors is to give a wider field of, of, of view so that you can kind of get a, a sense of what's going on in those blind spots. Uh, they're not curved a lot, but they're curved a little bit. Does that picture make more sense now using this ray diagram? That's the question. We're going to switch gears. Concave mirrors have a very wide diversity of outcomes. They're, um, well, here, let me, let me start with these three pictures. I'll maybe refer back to them verbally. This first picture, this guy is uh, sitting in a chair right side up. He's not upside down. But the image that's been created in his camera is flipped, okay? Very strange. So, again, the picture that he took, uh, he, he was sitting right side up, but, the, but his image is upside down. Over here in this middle picture and in this picture on the right, we see images that are right side up, but obviously bigger. So what in the world is going on? Why can a concave mirror give us weird, diverse outcomes like this? Well, we're going to use ray diagrams to try to explain what is going on. This is a conceptual picture. I'm going to zip through this very quickly. Again, we have principal axis, we have a focal point, different this time. Uh, you'll notice that the light rays that come in are squeezed in towards the principal axis, hence the word converging mirror. Concave mirrors squeeze the light in towards the principal axis. By the way, this physics is also relevant for things like satellite dishes and direct TV satellite uh, dishes and things like that. Um, I'll show you a couple pictures at the end of the, of the slides in the lesson. Okay. We're going to go through this ray diagram. Uh, of course, feel free to hit pause at any moment you need to. Let's see if we can understand what is going on. Here is our object. We need to start with the object. We're going to do three ray diagram light uh, rays. Okay. This first light ray is going to bounce off the top of the object. It's going to go parallel to the principal axis. It's going to bounce, law of reflection, and uh, reflect through the focal point. Okay, you can follow that all the way here. The next light ray is the focal point ray. We're going to send the light ray through the focal point. It's going to hit the, the mirror and uh, reflect back here uh, parallel to the principal axis. Last but not least, we have the centering ray. Very similar story to what we've seen before. Uh, what's really cool about this is if you notice all three of those reflected light rays actually meet up right here. 
This is an image that we could project and capture onto a screen. Uh, the object itself will be inverted and bigger, but it's, uh, it's not a virtual image. It's a real image. Uh, our eyes would detect it as such. Uh, the image would be of the same object that you had sitting right here, but it would be upside down and bigger. Very, very cool. Uh, con now, notice the object for the concave mirror. The object is, is uh, between the focal length and the center of curvature position here. Uh, the object is not really far away. It's not really close in. It's uh, right there. If this was 10 centimeters, this would be 14 centimeters out uh, away from the actual mirror. In this next ray diagram, the object is very far away. So this object is way over here, okay? Um, again, the reason why the arrowhead is, is drawn this way, this is the top of the object, okay? So our first light ray goes out parallel to the principal axis. It goes uh, bouncing off here with the law of reflection kicking in through the focal point. The next light ray is the focal point ray. It goes through the focal point and then reflects back parallel to the principal axis. And then last but not least, we have the centering ray, which uh, kind of emanates from the object, hits the mirror, and comes back right in the direction from whence it came. Again, you'll notice these three light rays here meet up right at the top of the image. Again, this would be something that you could project. It's going to be inverted and smaller than the actual object. Um, pretty cool. Pretty cool result. Um, this is uh, one of the unique attributes of concave mirrors. You get some diverse outcomes. Um, this is another possibility with these concave mirrors. This is the makeup mirror, okay? If this picture is understood, you'll understand why makeup mirrors do what they do. The object in this case, which could, which could be you, if you're using the makeup mirror, uh, you're going to be really, really in close to the mirror, okay? So this object is is if the focal length was 10 centimeters, you're only seven centimeters away from the mirror, okay? The first light ray here is uh, the principal axis ray. We're gonna send the light ray off from the top of the object parallel to the principal axis. It's gonna reflect and go through the focal point. Um, the next light ray is uh, a little bit funky because you'd say, well, the focal point is over here. Well, we're gonna use that focal point as a reference position. So our, our next light ray is gonna be sent off Using the focal point as a reference place, um, uh, imagine you have a straight edge here, right? You're going to be sending that light ray off from the top of the object in towards the mirror. It's going to reflect back parallel to the principal axis. And uh, you'll notice that reflected ray has these dashed lines behind there. The last light ray is the centering ray. And the way that that works is, I'll show you right here, the light ray goes off uh, using the center, center of curvature as a reference position bounces right back in the direction from whence it came. Once again, you'll notice these actual light rays do not meet up. So at that point, the only thing that really is possible for an explanation in this uh, particular context is if you take the reflected light rays and you extrapolate them back to the world behind the mirror, you get a virtual image. But it's bigger. This is exactly why people use makeup mirrors, because you're right side up, you don't get that goofy inversion, and you're magnified larger. You can see details in that makeup mirror that you wouldn't normally see. You can see the pores and everything in your skin, um, just like uh, uh, kind of in that extreme detail, like what a magnifying glass would do uh, with lenses, but that's a different story for another day. Okay, this is a mirror uh, that is intended to reflect light. So anyway, you might have one of these makeup mirrors in your house and uh, doesn't matter which one you have, you're going to be using it uh, by being really up close to it, and uh, it's going to allow you to get that, uh, that, that magnification that you're looking for. Lots of different uh, examples of curved things. Uh, this is a, a satellite dish. It does the same thing as a, as a mirror, except it's using radio wave frequency light instead of visible light. Uh, here we have sound waves. A sound technician can uh, use this... Uh, uh, the same physics here to sort of uh, concentrate the sound waves into the microphone. Uh, here we have a, a, a solar uh, panel. Uh, I don't know the exact name of that particular solar panel, but uh, similar physics. And then we have a whispering hallway at the Museum of Science and Industry. Okay, we're just about out of time. Hit pause. Take a look at the summary. You guys, let me know if you have any questions. Take care.